Hey guys, it's Katie with Wild Blush Creations, and here is my tutorial for my Herringbone V Split Tumbler. As always, everything I use will be listed and linked down below, so if you want to see how I created this tumbler, keep on watching. So for this tumbler, I am using a 30 ounce skinny tumbler from Maker Flow Crafts. And then I have this printed pattern vinyl from the Vinyl Cottage Shop. And then I picked out four glitter colors from Glitter Hard Coat. We have Ballerina, Blue Jeans, Savvy Sage, and Stardust. And I thought these glitters went so well with this vinyl. And then I picked out four acrylic paint colors to use to apply our glitter. The first thing I'm going to be doing is applying our vinyl for the V-split and how I do this super easy is I just fold the piece of vinyl in like quarter twice so in half triangle and then in half again going the other way. That way we have four even triangles. And then I'm just going to be taking my scissors and cutting along the folded lines to get our triangles cut out. And then once I have the vinyl cut out, I am going to decide which triangle I want to use as all the pattern will be slightly different. And then I'm going to trim off this little excess from the end of the vinyl. And now what I'm going to do is take the cup and wrap the vinyl around it to make sure it's going to fit perfectly around. And then to apply the vinyl, the easiest way to do this I have found is to take the bottom corner and lift up a little bit of the backing and fold it down and apply that to your cup first. So that way we can easily pick it up and get it positioned the way we want it in the right spot. And then when we apply the rest of it, it's really easy to go from left to right or right to left, whichever way you wanna do it. And now that we have that bottom corner secured in place, I'm going to take more of that backing off and just smooth my thumb against the vinyl going upward to help prevent getting any air bubbles. And if you do see any air bubbles as you are applying, you can just kind of lift the vinyl up a little bit and re-smooth it out. And if there are some tiny air bubbles left, that's fine because then we'll go back in with our weeding tool at the end and kind of pop them and re-smooth them out. So now I am taking the rest of the backing completely off and I am starting with one side and smoothing that side onto the cup and making sure it's nice and tight by the rim, getting rid of any air bubbles, and then just working my way to the other side to secure that vinyl. So as you can see, when I applied the vinyl, I did leave about a quarter of an inch of an overlap at the top of the rim of the cup. So now I am just taking my thumb and smoothing that over the rim. That way when we trim off the excess, 
we can get a nice smooth line and it's even all the way around the cup. So now what I am doing is I am just going through and looking at that vinyl for any tiny air bubbles that may have still been there from when I applied and going in with my weeding tool, popping the bubbles and smoothing it down. And you won't see any of the holes from doing this as long as you are very careful. And now I'm going in with my X-Acto knife with a brand new blade on it and I am just cutting off that excess lip that I left around the rim of the tumbler and just carefully taking that off. So now for the herringbone glitter portion of the tumbler, I am taking some one inch painter's tape and I am going to first start by taping off along the edge of the vinyl and then using my X-Acto knife and trimming off any excess where the tape meets. Reason for cutting where the tape meets is because Every line in this herringbone pattern is going to be a different color of glitter versus where in a traditional V split it doesn't matter if the tape overlaps at all because it's generally the same color but this one is almost going to be similar to a braiding pattern of all the different colors of glitter. So now when it came to actually getting the pattern in there correctly, it did take me a minute or two to kind of sap and think of like the way to properly go about this so I got the pattern correctly. And the easiest way for me to do that is I kind of thought of a braid because I am an old hairstylist so that kind of gave me the idea of the easiest way to do this. So right there, I noticed that I was gonna have two shorter lines matching up evenly, which I didn't want, because you kinda wanna have it that alternating pattern. So I switched it to the other side, and then just kinda figured out that when putting down these lines of tape, you wanna go every other side. So if you tape off a line on the left side, then you wanna rotate it for the next stripe, and tape off on the right side, if that makes sense at all. And once you finally get that pattern to how you want it, usually as long as you get those first couple of strips of tape down, you'll be able to see the pattern and it goes a lot quicker after that.
Okay, so now that I have my pattern all taped off, I'm just going to be taking some tape and taping off along our first section of tape. That way we are protecting our vinyl from any paint or glitter. And once I got that tape placed, I did take a Sharpie and mark it to remind myself to leave those pieces of tape there until the end. So now when it comes to glittering, I did do one stripe at a time. If you are a really good like mentally visualizing person where you can visualize all the colors in your head or if you want to pre-plan it out and mark the tape the different colors, that way you can do one color fully at a time. So do all your blue stripes at a time, all your pink stripes at one time, so on and so forth but I didn't think of that and I just kind of went with the glitter as I applied it and just kind of visualized it by looking at it directly, if that makes sense. And next time I do this, I probably would do a white base because with some of the paint colors, um, they were a little translucent because of the stainless steel cup background and I did have to go in with a second coat of glitter um, which kind of took a little bit of extra time but it ended up working out and it turned out just fine but to make it a little bit easier on myself or make it easier on you I would recommend doing a white base coat of spray paint before you started this process. And glittering all of my lines separately did take me quite a while. Um, I want to say it took me about 40 minutes, 45-ish minutes to glitter it completely. So I will speed up that part of this video because it is pretty much self-explanatory just by watching. You peel a strip of tape, decide what color you want to do, paint your paint on, and apply your glitter directly. And how I went about with deciding what color went where is I just knew I didn't want the same color of glitter too close to another stripe that was already that same color. So I wanted to make sure that I was spacing them out in a really good way.
Okay, so now that I have finally got all of the glitter on there, I am just going to peel off the remaining tape off of the vinyl, and then I am going to be setting this off to the side overnight to dry completely. I mentioned earlier in the video, I did have to go over and do a second coat of glitter after the first one to make it a little bit more solid of coverage and I decided to not show that in this video because it's the same exact process as I did before. Um, I just used Mod Podge and went over with more of the same glitter colors. And this is already a very long and in-depth tutorial and I didn't want to make it any longer for you guys. So once the glitter is fully dry, I did seal it with Rust-Oleum two times clear matte spray paint about five times because you really, really, really want to make sure that these glitter colors don't move and mix into each other. So then once the clear spray paint has dried, I am taking some CC DIY Medium Viscosity Epoxy and applying that all over the tumbler and I am doing the glitter section first. That way I am not accidentally dragging any potential loose glitter particles onto the vinyl. And then once I have the epoxy fully applied, I am going to let this spin and cure or I should say dry for six to eight hours before going in with my second coat of epoxy. And then I do make sure to go in with my torch to pop any bubbles. And now that our second coat of epoxy has dried completely in order to be able to handle it, I'm going to take a medium grit sanding block and sanding down all of the rough surfaces before applying our vinyl stripes. And to clean up my rim, I am just taking my Dremel with a sanding bit on it and going around the top rim exposing a super fine line of stainless steel that way we create a good seal for our epoxy and before applying our vinyl stripes i am going to be wiping down my tumbler with 91 percent rubbing alcohol to get rid of any of the sanding dust and excess particles from the surface of our cup. So now to apply our vinyl stripes, I am taking this metallic silver vinyl that I sized on Cricut Design Space using the square shape and resizing that to 0.01 for the width and then 11 for the height. And the way you want to do this is a little bit different than your traditional B split is you want to follow each straight line until it meets a point. So even though some of the colors or some of the lines, as you can see, where the blue and the green meet, it's still a straight line connecting downward. So you just want to follow each line um, along the glitter to make sure that everything meets up properly. A little hard to explain, so I hope you can get like a general idea of how I worded that or at least just by watching how I do it. But if you do have any questions, 
go ahead and leave them down below in the comments and I will try to answer more as best as I can. So now to finish off the bottom of our cup, I am taking navy from Pop of Color Paint and I am going to be using a Wet n Wild makeup brush to paint the bottom of the tumbler. And I did go in with two coats of the paint to get a nice solid coverage. Just make sure you let the paint dry thoroughly in between each coat. And once the paint on the bottom of our tumbler is completely dry, I'm going to put the cup on the turner and go in with Quick Coat by CC DIY to seal in our vinyl stripes. And I have learned countless times that if you do not seal in your vinyl, especially for stripes, I have always had issues with them lifting, but once I started using Quick Coat, I have had absolutely zero problems with my vinyl striping lifting at either the top or the bottom of my cup. And then once the Quick Coat was applied, I did let it spin and dry for a couple of hours to make sure it was fully 110% dry because if you don't let it dry thoroughly you are risking the chance of there being cloudy spots in your epoxy. So now that the quick coat is fully dry I am going in with CC DIY medium viscosity epoxy one more time and doing our final couple coats and for this tumbler, I ended up doing three final coats of epoxy, making sure everything was nice and smooth. And I did go in and sand between each layer of epoxy as well. And this is how the finished tumbler turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I know it was a long one, but if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future tutorials. Bye.